watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Virtual GHS Insider, the show that's all about the G online. I'm Tanise Anderson, and today you'll get an inside look at everything happening virtually around Germantown High School. In our Campus Corner segment, Principal Townsend talks about the challenges of getting the school ready for virtual learning. Creative thinking outside the box a little bit has been a new norm. This year has brought many changes, like the yearbook. Hear all about the new and exciting things in this year's annual Ahead in Club Chat. We want to accurately capture the year as the yearbook is kind of a history book for Germantown High School this school year. And later in sports, Chevy Talley talks with the Red Devils head football coach, Gene Robertson, about the ups and downs of coaching during a pandemic. If we're in school, sports should definitely come back. But first, while suburban districts continue with a mix of hybrid and in-person learning during the pandemic, Shelby County classrooms are still virtual, and it may be taking a toll on students and teachers. GHS Insider reporter Madison Rick and videographer Isaac Pierce explore the benefits and obstacles of virtual learning. Virtual learning is here to stay in Shelby County. Many seniors like myself never imagined we will be stuck at home our final year in high school. But with the help of SCS faculty and our parents, we can make the most of this situation. But it's a new environment for everyone, so it's taking a lot to adjust and get used to. All right, Caitlin, is your question about this? My initial thought for when Shelby County announced virtual school was that we aren't going to go to school, and that made me really sad because I wanted to hang out with my friends and do after-school activities. I'd rather be in a classroom, but due to all the COVID going around and due to safety, I feel like this was the best option. Personally, how are we going to do this? What's our mission? Let's get it done. You can sit that get it done call. attitude is what has helped Shelby County Schools succeed in virtual learning. To, uh, the biggest positive surprise is the behavioral issues. There are none, really. So we're able to actually teach and the participation level of all products. students has really surprised me because it's so positive. And I told my students at the beginning of the year, you know, this is what we are faced with in order for us to grow as a community, in order us, for us to learn. The timing is actually quite good. Your rhythm is pretty solid, girl. So what we're seeing is, after we add the energy in. I'm really enjoying it. It's uh, an opportunity for something I've been wanting to do for a long time. And something called oxidation and reduction is going on. While virtual school has many benefits, number one being student safety, there are obstacles that come with online learning as well. Some of the obstacles I face while learning is having complications with the computer. Sometimes they'll mess up before class or during class, so I'll miss some of the things that I need to learn. It's a bit draining trying to be at the computer every day. It's draining that you guys sit at 50 minutes for each class period and talk about a certain topic and no one doesn't want to answer the questions. Why are you all so quiet? Talk. <laughs> yeah, I'll go. Obstacles go beyond work. It extends to a student's physical and emotional well-being. COVID has affected me a lot mentally and emotionally. Our life was turned upside down on the longest Friday the 13th we've ever had. Despite all of the unknowns surrounding COVID-19, students still hope to return to school this year. I hope I get a chance to go back to school so I can go back to living my life in school because I have so many goals for me. In October, SCS announced a possible student phase-in starting in January. However, with the recent local spikes in COVID cases, we are waiting to see if that will happen. 
Reporting for GHS Insider, I'm Madison Ricks. A lot went into getting GHS faculty and students ready for the virtual school year. So let's dig deeper. Here's Madison Ricks again at her home studio for today's Campus Corner. Thanks, Ternice. In our first Campus Corner of the school year, we are of course talking about virtual school. Here to talk about how GHS got ready to go virtual and where we go from here is Principal Marvin Townsend. Mr. Townsend, thank you so much for joining me. You're welcome. Thank you for having, us, having me today. It was a pretty smooth transition when students logged on to Microsoft Teams for the first time in August. How did you and the GHS staff ensure that there would be no major hiccups? One of the big things we started doing was immediately working on a transition plan for the teachers. How do we get them trained and how do we get the hands on material or the actual teams set up for them to go into and actually have students and test it and be able to run day one. That was important. That was the number one goal. We wanted every teacher, every student to be ready to hit the ground running day one of school so that we were ready to start school. While preparing for the virtual year, what tasks proved to be the most difficult? Probably the trying to get teachers to feel comfortable, comfortable enough to know what questions to ask, when to ask them, when they should be asking the questions that, uh, you know, so many of them technology was not something they were comfortable with. They or the ones that felt very comfortable, felt like they knew everything and were running. And all of a sudden they realized, wait a minute, this, this is something new. This is something totally different. Uh, I need to step back and say, maybe I don't know everything here. Maybe I do need to rely upon uh, the team of teachers that stepped up. We had a whole team of teachers that were training teachers all summer long and willing to answer questions, willing to be there, walk them through, and even at times run down the hallway on the first days of school and say, hold on just a second, kids. I've got to run next door to get Miss So-and-so or Mr. So-and-so on. So this was part of it. Because of virtual learning, teachers had to rethink the way they teach. Can you talk about some of the pros that come along with the outside thinking and has that affected how students learn? Definitely. Uh, being creative, thinking outside the box a little bit has been a new norm, as we call it. Um, thinking about what we're actually assigning, looking at the curriculum and saying, okay, is this 100% vital? Can we cut this in order to spend the time necessary on certain parts of the curriculum that we need to emphasize to get every student ready to move to the next level? That's probably been one of the biggest challenges for teachers. You know, as a teacher, you get the mindset, everything is important. Well, we had to look at what really, really was important and say, can we cut this and the students still understand and grasp what they needed to grasp. Because at the end of the day, we know that students were struggling. They're struggling to sit in front of the cameras for eight hours at a time. The teachers were struggling and still are, but hopefully as we continue down this path, we'll get even stronger at looking at it and saying, hey, this can be put off till next year, or this can be put off till a later time and we're gonna cover this with this particular standard at this time and combine standards. In October, SCS announced a possible student phase-in starting in January. If this happens, what is Germanstown's plan to ensure the safety of students and faculty? One of the biggest things is going to be the daily checks. Every student will have to have their temperature checked. Every student will have to go through a screening process before they even come into the building every single day. This will help the, help assure that one, no one's running a temperature, two, no one's been exposed to someone that possibly has been sick or is currently sick. Uh, and we're gonna rely upon the students actually truthfully answering and being able to check their temperatures. Uh, 
Once we make it through the daily protocol, then daily check-ins. And the social distancing, that's going to be a must. We're going to have to distance and wear our mask all the time while we're on campus. Uh, there's not going to be a lot of movement on campus. Once students come in, they're going to be assigned to a particular area, and they will remain in those areas until a block setting time is set aside to transition to either to a lunch or back to a classroom. Mr. Townsend, again, thank you for speaking with me. Thank you, Madison. Have a great afternoon. You as well. Trinice, back to you. Time now for a little history lesson. Here's Alyssa Goodwin with today's Moments in History. Hello, I'm Alyssa Goodwin here with today's Moments in History. Did you know Christmas wasn't always a holiday in the United States? In fact, Congress was still in session on Christmas Day. It wasn't until in 1870 that President Ulysses S. Grant declared it an official national holiday in the U.S. And you know, the holidays aren't the same without a Christmas tree. President Franklin Pierce brought the first Christmas tree into the White House in 1856. Then, in 1923, President Calvin Coolidge started the White House tree lighting ceremony. Finally, we all love sending holiday wishes during this type of year, which is why, in 1843, British illustrator John Calcott Horsley invented the first Christmas card. That's all for Moments in History. I'm Alyssa Goodwin. Welcome to Club Chat. I'm Dylan Stevenson. Today, we are talking about the big yearbook changes. Ms. Morgan McKnight, the yearbook sponsor, joins me to discuss how her staff is handling yearbooks this year. Welcome to the show, Ms. McKnight. Thank you. So the big change this year is the yearbooks focusing on seniors only. Why did you make that decision? Well, when we were in the planning process, we've been working on what to do in these unprecedented times with the yearbook because we know we always try to include as many students as possible in the yearbook. Um, but this year, it's a little bit different. So seniors always get their pictures made at Holland Studios, whereas underclassmen get their pictures made here at school. As we have nobody at school, um, there was no way for us to be able to get underclassmen pictures made in a safe way um, that would be within the guidelines that are set forth by the people that are in charge. So it was more important for us to make sure that everybody is able to stay safe. So for us, we had to make a very difficult decision and that was to make this a senior focused book as the seniors have been getting pictures made um, since the spring. Was the switch from an in-person staff to a virtual one difficult? Very. So um, our yearbook is a student publication, which means that I'm kind of facilitating, but the students are doing the majority of the work and making the decisions. I'm here to assist. Um, so making the switch to a virtual platform with yearbooks specifically is a major challenge. Um, in addition, my staff is very new this year. The majority of my staff from last year graduated. So that means that we've been training online, learning the software online, learning things like taking pictures, writing captions, all of that stuff stuff has been learned online. Um, my staff has had to put in a lot of time over the summer, um, back in the spring before we even started school, um, just to learn all the ins and outs of yearbook because it's a lot anyway, but then doing it virtually is a big challenge, but they have most definitely risen to the challenge. They've done great. What other challenges have you and your staff faced? The biggest challenge I would say that we faced is being able to reach all students. So a big problem is that we're not able to zip across the hall to the next teacher's classroom and pull a student um, to ask them their thoughts on homecoming or um, to ask them what they think about this or that. So being able to reach the students has been a big challenge. It's also been a challenge to find coverage ideas just simply because everybody is at home and we want to accurately capture the year as the yearbook is kind of a history book for Germantown High School this school year. So we wanna make sure that we're able to capture as much as we can um, without having to reach too far to make it work. Can you give us an update on where the yearbook stands right now? Absolutely. So at this point, we are on track. Um, everything has been moved back. 
So at this time, we are kind of behind where we normally would be, but since we started school a little bit later, that's okay. Um, at this time, we are waiting on senior pictures to be uploaded and sent to us um, and senior ads to be created. So we are in the midst of getting everything uh, put on pages and ready to roll. Well, Miss McKnight, this was a great conversation. Thank you for being on the show, and I can't wait to see the yearbooks. Thank you so much for your time. Back to you, Ternice. Now it is time for a pop quiz. I know you're sick and tired of all the tests and work, but before you leave for the holidays, we have one last question. Though it is thought of as a Christmas song, what 1875 song about a popular sleigh ride was originally composed for Thanksgiving? Is it A, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, B, Jingle Bells, or C, Sleigh Ride? And the correct answer is B, Jingle Bells. Congrats, you passed our first pop quiz. Now let's get an update on the world of sports. Here's Shelby Talley. Hey, Red Devils. Earlier this semester, SES Superintendent Dr. George Ray announced fall sports games were suspended indefinitely due to the COVID pandemic. The reason? SES sports teams have been responsible for 83% of COVID-19 cases among students and staff in the district. While it's not the way he envisioned his first year at GHS, Red Devils head football coach Gene Robinson is making the most of the situation. He joins me now to talk more about the year that wasn't. Thank you, Coach Robinson, for joining me on GHS Insider. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. Before the spread of COVID, how were you preparing your players for the upcoming season? Oh, man, before the spread, I mean, we were really getting after it. Uh, we had 85 kids in, in the weight room uh, just really pumping iron and, and pushing and and getting excited and, and really competing, um, being prepared for a spring season. Obviously, when uh, COVID hit, everything shut down. So we actually went online and we were doing virtual workouts within Zoom. Um, and, and even still then, we were really enjoying it. You know, as it was just good with those, uh, say, for instance, we took a month off without, without being on Zoom. Just good to see everyone jump on Zoom and, and you know, uh, it was totally different, but that was exciting as well. And um, as it just kept going, man, it just kept being a burden on us, you know, but we uh, continue to work through it. Um, obviously, we, we, we put things in place where we took we took temperatures, we had questions daily, uh, contract traces. So um, it was a lot to go into it. This certainly is a challenging year for everyone, especially the seniors who want to continue to play in college. Can mm -hmm. you talk about the challenges they face in terms of scholarship, scholarship opportunities? Yes, it is uh, extremely tough. Uh, you know, uh, not, not having that actual game film. Some seniors grow going into their year, senior year. Some seniors don't actually play a game until they become seniors. You know, they might have been sitting behind someone for three years. Um, so it's extremely tough. Um, and then it became even tougher when the NCAA allowed all of their athletes to gain a year. So those 25 scholarships that open up, they're slim now. So maybe you, you may be having some teams with only 10 scholarships, or you may be having some teams with only 15, or you don't know. So I've been uh, suggesting the, the, the players that we do have that, that have offers, I've been, man, please commit, please commit so you can claim your spot. We, we've still had some success with guys getting, getting scholarship offers, and I'm really excited for them. Um, but overall, it, 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 it's, it's a tough, it's a tough thing to deal with. What are your thoughts on the possibility of students returning January? And should sports also come back too? <laughs> um, if we're in school, sports should definitely come back. I think sports uh, is a big deal for our young people um, 
to get away, you know, uh, to get away from, from, from all the challenges that you have every day. And, and you, I know for me and, and for a lot of our players, football is that place, that happy place that man, I, you know, I've been, I've been working my tail off in the classroom. I've been, been doing everything right in the, at the house. And now I get to have some fun and, and just do what I love to do. You know, so definitely if we're back in school, definitely, man, I, I have my fingers crossed and, and I hope that we're playing sports and we're getting after it. There's a lot of opportunity for guys to continue their education for free. That's that's a huge deal for, for, for uh, young people in our area, man. And, and I hope that we can continue to um, push that for our kids. Well, Coach Robinson, this was a great conversation. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Like I said, I enjoyed it. That's your look at the world of sports. Ternice, back to you. A GHS fine arts teacher navigates his first year with the Red Devils in the midst of a pandemic. Can you guess who it is? Here's Maya Mitchell with today's Who's Who. Thanks, Ternice. I'm here with Mr. Weddle, our new art teacher at GHS. Thanks for joining me today. Oh, thank you for having me. How long have you been teaching art? I began really young, but I think professionally it's better just to say 20 plus years. <laughs> this isn't your first time teaching art, but this is most definitely your first time teaching art through a computer screen. How have you changed the way you teach for virtual school? I think the big change for me is uh, not being able to see what they're doing right away. Um, I'm used to going around the class and taking a look at what they're doing as they're doing it and uh, making quick changes if needed. But now I, it's a little bit more of a delay, whereas the work will get to me either sometimes through email, but mostly through Teams, and I get to uh, respond or sometimes even make corrections uh, and send it back to them. Um, that's a little weird, but uh, I'm okay with waiting. I just have to be patient. Although you haven't been able to fully immerse yourself in GHS, how has working at GHS been for you so far? Well, uh, working at uh, GHS uh, so far has been uh, a lot of fun. Um, the uh, art department has been really taking care of me and just the amount of humor uh, within our group um, has been really appreciated, especially uh, at the beginning, uh, just kind of moving in, which I'm still moving in. My room is, uh, a, there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, so I'm still trying to juggle all that. But, um, you know, outside of the ghost town mentality and, and whatnot, um, there's a lot of communication online and emails and and text messages. So. That's cool. Finally, what is one thing you want students and teachers to know about you? Any special hobbies or anything? Uh, let's see. Uh, one thing that I probably would like people to know about me is um, originally um, I uh, was born in Michigan, and um, but most of my family is from Tennessee. I, I grew up coming down here at least twice a year my entire life. And, you know, uh, very commonly, I guess, with a lot of visual artists, I consider myself kind of a musician as well. But, you know, I don't know if I could actually say, you know, uh, particularly trained in anything. But uh, I guess that's for an, another day. <laughs> a lot of the different things that I've messed around with. Mr. Weddle, thanks for talking with me today. Good luck with oh. the rest of the year. Well, thank you. And... Good luck to you as well. <laughs> That's it from Who's Who. Back to you, attorneys. Thanks for watching our first virtual GHS Insider. As we leave you, here are some of our peers talking about the holiday season and their family traditions. Have a great and safe holiday break. My favorite part of the holiday season is just hanging out with my family and enjoying the atmosphere, which is very positive and relaxing. It's really nice because I'm all I'm like with family the entire time, and I get to see family that I haven't seen in a while. Um, besides eating all the food we make together, uh, I think our 
biggest traditions would be just getting together, watching the holiday movies. And we also like to drive around and look at Christmas lights on Christmas Eve. My favorite holiday tradition that we have is my siblings and I always do Secret Santa every year, and so that's always really fun and also very chaotic. Christmas vibes, Santa, all of that, Rudolph, Red Nose Reindeer, all that positivity and greatness. And put all of the hardships and the struggles to the side. When it comes to holiday traditions, my family, we usually just wait for my mom just to finish cooking the Thanksgiving food or Christmas food, and then we'll sit down at the table and pray and eat. And that's it for our holiday tra traditions.